And here we are, back in for another edition of Trey's Chowdown Live. We're here with Dallas Hale. Dallas, thanks, thanks. I appreciate you coming today, buddy. Hey, thanks for having me. You bet, man. We're gonna uh, get we're gonna do some hot topics real quick, and then we're gonna talk to Dallas. So we've got uh, next Friday morning for two hours. We have on ABC Channel Eight Daybreak. We have our chicken special. They want to do a special um, for chicken because uh, everybody's been eating holiday food. So absolutely, we're doing a two-hour chicken special on ABC uh, Channel Eight. And then Saturday morning, we've got a um, Best Chili in uh, Dallas-Fort Worth for uh, Fox 4. And then uh, in February, we've got our Best Burgers in uh, in all of Dallas-Fort Worth. You don't have burgers, do you? Yes, we do. You do have burgers? At all my locations. <laughs> I'm going to try to go have to check <laughs> <Absolutely>. that out. <laughs> we've got a Wagyu burger at Evan Flow. Do you really? Uh-huh. Oh, my gosh. I'm, a, I'm excited about that. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, I talked about this last week, but I just touched on it uh, when uh, Chef Gregory was here. But uh, the, the uh, Le Cordon Bleu location, location has been sold, and uh, El Centro Culinary College is going to move down there to uh, the new Le Cordon Bleu, the old Le Cordon Bleu right. location, and they're moving down there. So if y'all are interested in any kind of culinary career, the one in downtown is staying there, and they're just adding another, another to the old uh, Le Cordon oh, wow. Bleu building, which is going to be a neat deal, especially if you want to be a chef. Absolutely. you got to have that passion. <laughs> and the drive. And the drive. And the drive. I always tell everybody the difference between a cook and a chef. <laughs> passion. Big, passion. That's right. Passion there you and go. drive. That's right. So, Dallas, uh, you're, C- you're CEO of uh, Shell Shack. Correct. And where, where are you from originally? Uh, I was born in Houston, raised in Plano. So you are a Texas boy. Absolutely. Okay, that's awesome. So you, uh, you, you're in the military? Yes, sir. From uh, 89 to 93. Oh, what, what, what division? Coast Guard. Coast Guard, do you like it? Uh, yeah, it was it was a good time and it uh, helped shape me. Helped shape you? Yeah. It did. And I went to military school. So Oh very nice. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, I was I was gone. <laughs> <laughs> My father was in the restaurant business and he was always gone and uh, he just thought it better if I go to military school, which was good. It shaped me. It was very Absolutely. I really by my by my second year I didn't want to go anywhere else. I really enjoyed it. Oh, okay, good. I guess uh, I guess military kind of it was run by a lieutenant colonel commandant from the Marine Corps, so oh, it, was okay. a, it was a very serious deal. Strict, strict, yes. yeah, strict. But that's okay. You think it's strict, but then once you get going, you realize it's it's good for you. Yeah, it's real good anybody. for anybody. So, so when so when you got out so when you got out were you were you in, interested in the restaurant business when you were in the military or was it after? No, it was after. Um, so I got out and I went in at a young age and uh, was hanging out in bars quite a bit and. I decided, you know, after about three months of hanging in bars, I liked it. I was like, well, why don't I work in the bar instead of spending my money in it? Because I <laughs> like being out at night and everything. And so I started bartending in a bar in Deep Ellum. Uh, oh, oh, Deep Ellum. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you were, you, or were, you, were you a night, night owl by, by just, is that the way you just felt you like being out at night? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's definitely the way to do it. That was that must have been a while, but that was a while back, huh? That was in the nineties. Yeah. So you've seen Deep Ellum go through two different rotations. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. We were just talking about that. It's it, they're doing fantastic. Oh, over there. it's booming down there. It's it booming is, down there. Uh, and and I used to think it was going to be Seventh Street and Fort Worth, but Deep Ellum has has now kind of have have, out, have outpaced them as far as new restaurants and new concepts. Absolutely, they're yeah. they're popping up everywhere there. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's unbelievable. So you were there, you were there in Deep Ellum, and then where'd you what'd you do after that? How how, how did it take how'd your career take shape? I guess. So I uh, worked in Deep Ellum for a while, uh, became a general manager, worked my way up, and uh, opened up a nightclub in Deep Ellum, and thought I knew how to own. Realized I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> About a year later, shut it down, and then uh, got real humbled and went back to managing and GMing, and then started really learning. It's uh, it's amazing, but that but that was an experience that you won't ever forget, though, right? Right, absolutely. Exactly. Yeah, it's uh, sometimes you have to learn by fire. And I, I absolutely learned that, and you know, to this day, I still have mentors that I call and I talk to uh, on a weekly basis. You know, Scott Gordon is a is a great one, and um, just different people. You know that, I, you know, once you think you know it all, you lose. What What is the thing out of that out of that one year that you own that that you own? What was the one thing that you took away from there that was most memorable to you that you'll never forget? That I didn't know a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I knew how to run a place. I didn't know how to own a place. Well, that's right. There's a yeah. big difference in there. There's a huge difference. Managers, owners. There's right. a big difference. I think a manager is a, an, an owner has got to be a full 360, full circle. And a manager sometimes gets gets focused on just the things at hand and not not everything that goes on. Absolutely. So, uh, so you did that, and you went back to GM, and then you worked. Did you stay there in Deep Ellum? Did you kind of work around Dallas? No, I uh, went over to Greenville Avenue. Um, oh, yeah. Was hitting doing some nightclubs, and then started getting into some restaurants. I wanted to get well versed in uh, you know all aspects. So I could work in sports bars, or I could work in nightclubs. I could work in restaurants, and you know different things. 
That's what my dad did to us, even though he owned a lot of restaurants. He made us, you know, start in the bathrooms, man. Oh, absolutely. Clean the bathrooms, you know, wash the counters. I mean, he did. He he wanted you to be fully versed in everything. He made you work at different locations, so you learned different people, the different mannerisms that, that people come in, that, of the of the, lived in the area, mm -hmm. geographical people that you work with, you know, because every store is different. Every every store is geographically located in a different location, so it's different people come in there, and also too, you work with different people. Right. And I think what you did is, I think working around is, is, is a big plus. Not only that, you learn from other other restaurant Absolutely. skills. Absolutely. So what did you do? What did you did you like the restaurant business or the bar business better? Um, bar business is more fun. Uh, yeah. Uh, being in operations is more fun, and then at one point I had to move over to the corporate side and. Um, wasn't quite as much fun, no. but but I was very good at it, and uh, so here I am now. <laughs> yeah, just, you have to balance your stress level at that side. Right. That, that's that's the thing you've got to be able to balance stress level and keep everything in line. Yeah, everybody thinks it's stressful on the op side, but oh. once, you, once you get on the corporate side, it gets real stressful. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, I don't, do y'all have do y'all have weekly meetings on Friday or Monday or anything? Uh, for Wednesdays. Your, Wednesdays. So yes. yeah. It was for us. It was Monday. It was always, <laughs> and he did that on purpose because he wants you to not screw up. You know, be be messed up all weekend right. and be able to come in on Monday. So, yeah, you know, it was fun. So, how did uh, how did Shell Shack get started? I mean, how, how did the concept? How, what what came about? So, uh, uh, my business partners um, and I went to a shellfish place, and I was sitting here looking at this place, going, "Man, this crab's really good," but. They're just doing everything wrong here. And so after a couple times of going there and seeing it packed out, I was like, we should do this. And so we took the next two and a half years um, developing our sauce and going through the motions and everything. And once we came up with it, then we opened our, up our first location on McKinney Avenue. So you, so you, you, I won't go back. You start, you, 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 you touch on something. I want, I want, it's just important. You said you developed your sauces first. Mm -hmm. A lot of people do it the reverse. A lot of people open up a new concept and then they, 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 it catches them in the rear and they have to start developing and they don't have everything done before they open up. So well, they catches, shut down. Real that's fast why they too. shut down. That's mm -hmm. what happens. So that was, so that was, that was. But you, that's something you learned mm -hmm. from your previous experiences. Correct. So you did when you say you develop, and I remember this when I went to your grand opening and your the media dinner you had in North Fort Worth. Fort Worth yeah. You were talking about all your sauces and everything and how how y'all did that. How many sauces do y'all have? I don't remember. Um, well, we have the Cajun, the lemon pepper, um, the no spice, and the kitchen sink. Right. And that's what, what was there was one that was on that. What was that big platter that I had? I couldn't. I was asking. Oh, one, you one. had. A, I think you had the VIP. Yeah, the VIP. Okay, okay, that was a big one. Yeah, right. It was huge. But and we gave you kitchen sink, and and that's what we sell ninety two percent of is uh, the kitchen sink sauce. So how did how did those sauces get developed? Was it through y'all going out and testing a bunch of them, or is this something testing a bunch of uh, testing a bunch of them and eating a lot of crab? <laughs> so we would sit there and they would bring out you know uh, about once a week we would you know try it again, try it again, try it again on Thursdays actually, Thursdays. and um, we would uh, uh, Matt and I would sit there and you know we'd get all of our friends out there and we'd sit here and say okay compare this and it took us like I said a good two and a half years and everybody was like. That's it. Patience pays off. Right. My granddad always said, if you're going to make, and he was in a meat business, we had meat coming to meat and restaurant business. He said, if you're ever going to make a major decision, three to think about it really hard for three to six months before you do anything with it. So you thought it for two years. So obviously you thought about it for a long time. Right. <laughs> so when you develop that first sauce and you, 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 the other two, you develop all at the same time or do you develop the sauces as you went along? All, all at the same time. All at the same time. Okay. Right. The kitchen sink was the main one that we had to develop. The other ones were were not that difficult. And those are obviously proprietary towards you. Correct. And you don't let uh, do you, do you sell them to anybody? No, just only in your restaurants. Only okay. in the restaurant. So after you do after you develop the sausage and you, and you open up the first one, what was the first one? McKinney Avenue. McKinney Avenue. Oh, that's a good spot. Mm -hmm. High volume. Very high volume, uh, but it was uh, too small. Too small. Um, uh, the restaurant took off. We ended up having to move it over to Knox Henderson. Okay, what when you when you when you opened up the first the first restaurant? What was your what was your major goal? Was it was it to just get people in there to try the food, or was it to try to have enough traffic to open up more locations? Or were you only concentrating on one? Lo were, you, were you gonna were you gonna franchise? Or were you gonna make more restaurants locations at that time? At that time, we were just thinking about one restaurant. Okay, yeah. that's what, okay. Yeah. That's, that's, so we were focused on that one restaurant, and then it took off and ex it exploded. And you know, we learned uh, while we were you know we had a good base with our sauce and everything. And then we le we've changed so many things on how we prep and how we do things um, in the last six years that uh, you know 
it's amazing. But we still have that base, you know, to work off of. Well, the fact that you change it, I tell everybody nowadays that are in the restaurant business, you, we bought a lot of restaurants because they didn't change, they didn't evolve. And now, if a restaurant, if a restaurant does not change or evolve weekly, man, you're not going to last long. I mean, no, you've got you to have to evolve. Flavor, and I think social media is a. I don't know, but I think social media is one of the biggest because they expect to see presentations, they expect to see colorful stuff, new new menu items. Things going on in the restaurant, you know, fun atmosphere, vibrant, fun and you, staff, yeah. you fun staff. Y'all, y'all do, y'all do, y'all do well with social media. Absolutely, I think it's important. Mm -hmm. So you did, so you did that one, and then you, but you moved it up to Knox Henderson. Correct. And then you've you've blown up from there. Well, we actually just moved it to Knox Henderson a year ago. Uh, Plano was our second location. Okay. And then we did uh, uh, Arlington and Mesquite back to back. We opened up Arlington and immediately moved over to Mesquite. As soon as the general contractors were done building that one out, send them over to Mesquite to build the next one out. Um, and then we did Denton, Fort Worth, uh, Houston, Tyler, and uh, Florida is um, in the process of being built as we speak. Uh, we got a second location being built in Katy. So, yeah. That's high volume area down there. Very high volume. Yeah, yeah, those Excited high volume about areas. being in Katy. Yeah. Um, what, what, what's your best store? If I could ask, you don't have time to tell, but I'm just curious what the best store is right now. Dallas. Dallas, okay. Mm -hmm. That's but they all do very well. So I I, did, I learned about y'all, I told you earlier before we started about, because uh, Fox 4 wanted me to find some unusual stuff. Right. And I found your tater tots. Mm -hmm. So uh, for people who have not had your tater tots, tell them, because your tater tots were delicious. Tell everybody about the tater tots. It, it's, it's like a crab stuffed tater tot. It's a uh, crab in the middle and it's tater tot on the outside and you can you can eat it. There's really no wrong way to eat it. I got people who eat it plain, people who put it in tartar sauce, ranch, cocktail sauce. I eat it with ketchup. So, yeah. you know, however you want to eat it. It's really good. We went back. I went back because I was trying to narrow stuff down. I went back a uh, second time to have them. They were just, they, they were, they were and they, the thing is they were consistently cooked the same both times. Sometimes if I go back to a restaurant to try, because I have to eliminate dishes, you know, for what am I, if I'm doing a list or something right. for show. And sometimes they're not cooked the same. And it was exactly the same. Well, and that's, uh, that's how one of the ways we've evolved in the kitchen is I've got everything on timers now. I've learned how to put crab on timers, tots on timer, fries on timer. And, you know, everything is very... Very simple, very easy, you know, just put it in and hit the button. Consistency. Consistency is key. <laughs> Take all the thinking out of it, right? right? Absolutely. <laughs> so what's y'all's number one dish at Crab Shack? <laughs> you, um, to, to you, what's your number one dish? Uh, my favorite dish or our top seller? I guess say your favorite dish. Bear Dad Crab. Is it really? Yes. Bear Dad Crab, it's uh, very rare. We're one of the only uh, few people who get it in the state of Texas. Um, it's uh, just sweet. If... Uh, we, we can't ever even put it on our menu. It's a, it's a chalkboard item. Um, we've been lucky enough for the last few years that we've kept it throughout the year. But at any time, they could say, you know, no bear dye crab this year. So we've never actually put it on our menu just for that reason. I remember you talking about that at the media dinner. That's the one from the TV sh the, on the TV show, correct? Cor yeah, the go, go Deadliest that, Catch. That, that's very interesting. So go through that. So on Deadliest Catch, you always hear about the elusive bear dye crab. Right. And, uh, you know, they touch on it. It's hard to catch and everything. And uh, while Bill actually from Deadly's Catch sat, sat in uh, our Plano location with me for about six hours and I learned so much from crab from that guy and he'll tell you any real crab or they will tell you bear die crab is the best crab out there. And it's succulent, it's sweet, it's more meatier, it's just a delicious crab. But but it, it, it's, it's I guess it's harder to find. Very hard to find, yeah. Is, is some years they don't find very much of it? Is that what the deal is? Yeah, some years they don't find very much of it. Uh, we're also, we always get all of our crab from Zone 12, which is the top zone. You know, there's different levels, which gives you different quality of crab. We always do Zone 12, and like last year, the reason why crab prices have gone up is there were whales in Zone 12, so they couldn't fish the zone hardly at all. So that will raise up the crab prices uh, for snow crab. So yeah. for, for a guy who's I'm not educated about, you said there's whales there, so they don't want to hurt. They don't want to hurt the whales, correct? Correct. Okay, well, that's amazing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But but if it was that would affect that would affect it a little bit if you, if you didn't if you had on the menu you didn't get it. So right. I can see why it's a chalkboard item. Absolutely. So is that do people come in and now request that from you? Yeah, we we educate people on it, and then we've got people that come in and they're like bear die, bear die, bear die, and I'm like, <laughs> man, I was like, I just hope we keep the bear die in. <laughs> well, it's kind of like the barbecue guys nowadays; they run out of stuff, and people think it's okay. It's kind of trendy, so mm -hmm. you know, right? I guess that's 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 a good thing, right? How did you meet him? How did um, you meet? He was coming in doing a. Uh, he came in do, uh, promoting a a rum. 
and they brought him into Shell Shack, and he was very surprised. He goes, you don't have bear-dye crab. And I was like, absolutely I have bear-dye crab. And he goes, no, you don't. Cook some bear-dye crab, bring it out here. And he's like, he goes, uh, wow. And he's taking pictures, and he goes, I'm sending this to all my, all my friends in Alaska. Look, look at this little Texas seafood restaurant that has bear-dye crab. <laughs> well, that's great. Yeah. So y'all became friends, and that's Yeah, neat. yeah, we text back and forth, uh, you know, quite a bit, and uh, he's a nice guy. So what? So have you found it as far as seafood wise? Because people sometimes before, n- not now, but five ten years ago, they they didn't think you could have fresh seafood. So have you had to educate people at, at, at Shell Shack at all about how fresh your food is? I mean, do they, do they understand that you get it fresh overnight and stuff like that? Do they know that? Well, it, it gets flown in um, the the seafood. You know, it's it's all frozen and it's packed on on the Bering Sea. So we get we get our snow crab and our king crab and our bear diet comes from the Bering Sea. Our shrimp comes from different places. You know, does it come in live? No, but is it fresh? One hundred percent. Yeah. So they so the process is they they get right there, pack it, and then then they overnight it. Correct. They, or they go to our our seafood purveyor. Oh, yeah. cool. That's neat. Right. Yeah. Because uh, everything that I have anywhere in Dallas Fort now from a, from a reputable seafood place, it's fresh to me. I mean, it Absolutely. Tastes, it tastes so good because used to. You could tell it wasn't fresh. It was just frozen, or it just didn't taste good. You right. Know, it was. It was a. It was a. It was a that been maybe sitting there for a while, but that's changed a lot. Yeah, that's changed a ton. That's changed a ton. So, 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 what is y'all's fa- y'all's y'all's best selling dish in the Dallas Fourth area besides the crab? I would. Uh, besides the bear it would be the snow crab. Um, that that's probably our number one seller. Um, that and shrimp. Shrimp. Real close. And the, and the where is well, like what's the appetizer that would sell the best? Who. Boy, that's rough. Um, <laughs> the crab tater tots, uh, the calamari, probably the calamari. I was just fixing to ask you that yeah. was my next question because I, I I love that dish too. Yeah. I have had that dish too. Calamari always tastes so good. Yeah, the calamari, uh, that's probably our number one seller. It's very light and flavorful. Mm-hmm. A lot of calamari has got a lot of breading on it, and it's, it's a hard, little harder, little, 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 little uh, I guess, rubbery, mm-hmm. and y'all's is never like that. Nope, nope. We try, uh, we, we've always tried to get... The best quality that we can possibly find. We we've really searched long and hard uh, when we get new product in. You know, moving over to the corporate side of things, the one thing I, I really keep mom and pop is uh, the tasting of the food. If we get a new product in, I call everybody into the one of the locations and I said, everybody taste this, and you know, raise your hand, yay or nay, and uh, that's how we. We uh, we go from there. It also keeps everybody involved, doesn't it? Absolutely. Well, I saw a lot of your people there at that media dinner, mm-hmm. right? It was with all. It was one of those guys your partner, your business partner? Was yeah. It? Okay. Yeah, Matt was her uh, my business partner, um, and then I had my uh, district manager uh, Bill. I had my GMs there. I had. It's, if you keep everybody involved, it makes it, it makes it feel like a more family because y'all's locations, although you're corporate, they don't feel corporate. I mean, everybody's friendly, and it's just a, it's a it's a really good environment. Right. Yeah. It's uh, maybe it's that passion you instill in them. We try. <laughs> yeah. So what's so what's the what's the next biggest step? What do you what's y'all's n- n- next dish y'all are working on? Um, it's a dessert. Uh, it's, oh, that's right. You t- okay. It's a it's a waffle or a funnel cake fries. Just oh, like wow. like funnel cake that you get out at, a, at a, out at the state fair. We've got funnel cake fries that are about to come out as a chalkboard item to see how they turn out. Oh my God! They're delicious. They're delicious. I bet they are. You get them with powdered sugar. Get them with cinnamon sugar. Get them with some caramel. It's uh, they're pretty tasty. Where did that come from? Um, <laughs> one of my reps came to me and said, "Have you tried these yet?" And I was like, "No." And should, they dropped off a case of them, and uh, I had everybody try them. And I was actually out of town when they were trying them. And they go, uh, "Dallas, you got to get up here and try these before the staff eat them all." <laughs> <laughs> So when we were there that night, I had to be up early, early the next morning, and mm-hmm. I, I was I had to leave, if you remember, and you said, no way, I want you to take the cake with you. The carrot cake. The carrot cake, and it was absolutely delicious, and I had many things going on in my mind. I'd written a few things down, but I my my girlfriend just told me the story, because you told her, because I was talking the same bite to somebody. Right. So will you tell, because the story's interesting. I, I love, to me, food tastes better with a story, Okay. and that's an interesting story, so tell that story. So the carrot cake came about, we had a good carrot cake, uh, very tasteful, never got any complaints about it from uh, one of the vendors, and um, Sam, who was a, uh, Sam Miller, who uh, worked for me, I knew her back in my coaching days, and she was working for me as a server, and she goes, Dallas, you know my mom can make a better carrot cake than this. <laughs> and I was like, no, I didn't. And so she goes, let me have her make you one and bring it up here. And I'm not a carrot cake fan at all. 
And I even liked this carrot cake. I was like, wow, that's good. And she goes, why don't you let my mom make the carrot cakes for you? And I was like, well, can't you keep up with the production of them? And uh, she goes, uh, she talked to her mom and she said, yeah, I can keep up with the production of them. Well, as we started opening up more stores and more stores, I started getting nervous. She's <laughs> like, I got it, I got it. Well, then we started opening up in different cities and now we're opening up in different states and everything. And she's, she's like, I've got it. Now she does it full time. And you know she she no longer has a day job and she does this full time for us. So well, it's just a great story. No, that the cake is absolutely phenomenal, amazing. We ma- never had a complaint. I didn't eat till the next day. It was still <laughs> good. It was really good. So is she so she's excited about that, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So how did she make that transition? Because that'd be a hard. I guess she just made it slowly, but sh- over time. Yeah, because as we opened up another store, of course, you know, we had to get more cakes and more cakes, and you know, luckily we didn't open up ten stores at one time. So oh, yeah, that'd be the death of death of anybody. Right. <laughs> Death of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so what? She makes she makes some. How many do y'all sell a store? I mean, is, is, is it average or is it is it one store a lot more? Yeah, than so it depends on the store. So yeah. some stores sell more than the other. Um, you know, you know, desserts always an upsell. You got to constantly drill into the server's head, and you know, you got to you got to do it passionately. You know, tell tell them about how we got the carrot cake and how it's homemade and. You know, made from scratch and everything because most people think you just get it from a purveyor they don't realize it's made from scratch if you tell if you to me nowadays if you tell somebody if it was the story then most often they're going to buy it absolutely have you seen i've seen i think the last five years seven years i've seen because of all the sweet shows on food network and channel network it seems like sweets have really taken off desserts and things and Big they time. like them has have you have you seen that trend in your yes. restaurants yes uh desserts are actually a very big thing and, and our desserts are you know our gelato um, that we get that goes on our bread pudding and stuff that comes from a friend of ours that make, makes it from scratch and um, <clears throat> Scotty and uh, just you know different things our cheesecake it's good you know um, our chocolate chocolate uh, cake it's you know delicious and these waffle fries I think are going to take off I mean a uh, funnel cake fries funnel cake fries are yeah. going to take <laughs> I off I like waffle fries too they can't I love, go wrong. Wa- I know, I love <laughs> waffle fries I got waffle fries <laughs> on the brain, brain. Yeah. I love fresh fries food yeah me too um um, so, but you see, you see how passionate you are, and how you talk about every, how you're involved you are with everything. Everything you have has almost every product you have is a story behind it, from your crab to your desserts, which is a neat deal for concepts. Most corporate stores are not like that. Most corporate stores, they 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 get a chef and they let the chef do this thing, and they they do a taste test and they throw it out there. And it's just your shell shack is a totally different concept than that. It's it's just neat. Well, we try we try to do our best. You know, I've got some very good uh, people that work for us, and. Um, you know, if the cooking was left up to me, we'd be in a world of hurt because uh, I'm, a, I'm a horrible cook. But, uh, but you know, um, our corporate executive chef, Rob, Robert Lopez, uh, he's amazing, along with, you know, Bill can, um, my DM, he can get back there and cook everything. And uh, all my managers can, you know, that's part of their training. So they're in the kitchen. They can work every every spot in the restaurant. I was just fixing to ask you if your managers were all cross-trained. I just fixed to ask you that. Absolutely, absolutely. Because, you know, that's that's a big thing. A lot of restaurant chains don't do that. They hire a guy to do one thing, and then when that guy's fired, then it's, by, then another, it's, it's, it's bad. And nowadays, I think everybody needs to be cross-trained. That's, that's good. You know, my uh, my business partner, you know, I'm the only one that can't jump in the kitchen. I'm I'm I that bad. Either. I'm that bad. <laughs> <laughs> now, now the way that we've uh, moved some things, I think uh, I could uh, get back there and boil some crab drop and, fr- yeah, 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 and yeah. drop fries and all that. Although they, uh, all my staff, they they want to see me do it. They're they're laughing, taking bets on how long I <laughs> get stuff out. But um, you know, it was actually my business partner uh, Matt Saba who uh, at our sports bar he was able to get back back in the kitchen and you know he's a he's a pretty good cook and he was able to get back in the kitchen and run stuff and run the line and cook when he had to and you know when we got real busy make pizzas and stuff like that so um you know that made me look at it and go okay you know this is something that we need to be able to do even though i can't do it you know right. um uh these guys can do it you know so so i want to talk about you know we're going to talk about your other concept but i want to talk about because i'm a, you know i'm a I have, I have my drink with trayside too because i like co- craft cocktails I, I i like to tell everybody about craft cocktails because they've gotten so popular too i've watched sure. them sweets and craft cocktails boy and i think it's because people want to drink but they don't want to taste the alcohol right is that right is that Correct. okay Correct. so y'all have got some fantastic craft cocktails um what are some of the, what's your best selling craft cocktail uh the adult strawberry lemonade Adult, so I think we tried it that night. Yes, you yeah, did. that was good. That was very good. You know, and and that's another education process because people will sit there and they'll go, "Well, I can't taste the alcohol in this," and I'm like, 
Well, if you want to taste the alcohol, I'll get you a shot of Cuervo. I go, but if you want to have a good cocktail, and I, and I promise you there's plenty of alcohol in it, yeah. you know, get one of our craft cocktails. And we had um, a friend of ours, Brian McAuliffe, who is um, known throughout the U.S. They He travels all around. He's the one that really started the craft cocktail concept uh, here in Dallas where the rest of us were bartenders or, you know, just drinking straight Crown and Coke or something. He really took his bartending to the next level and he got into the craft cocktails and he actually helped us make our menu um, and just as a friend, you know, came up and did it. And, you know, the guy, he's been on Food Network and he's been on Bar Rescue and, you know, he's grew up in the industry just like the rest of us. So. That Bar Rescue show something else. Oh, it's crazy. It's crazy. Sometimes I see those shows and I go, man, you really do not know to do that to save your, I mean, I, yeah, just, you know, that's got, that's all scripted. <laughs> I know it is. That's why when you see live shows, like I tell everybody, my show is, my show is real, it's raw, it's unscripted because so many shows nowadays are scripted mm -hmm. and you can't tell, but they are. And so it's just, I just, it's just crazy. Yeah. If that guy ever came in yelling at me like that, I'd be like, yeah. you better get out of my store right <laughs> yeah, now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah. So what can, can you, what are your three craft cocktails that are the top, top sellers right now? I'd probably say um, the Shell Shack Mama or the the Strawberry Lemonade's the number okay. one by far. That was uh, very good anyway. Uh, probably the Shell Shack Mama, and I could be off on that, and probably the... Tailor made adult cherry limeade, which there's actually a story behind that too. Okay, okay. First of all, Shell Shack Mama, I love the name. Where'd that come from? Um, <laughs> that's a good one. I don't know who you don't uh, who who, who uh, made that one. I, that might have been Matt who made that one. Um, Matt Matt's bartender extraordinaire from way back when. So that might have been Matt who made that. That's your one. that's your other business partner. Uh -huh. Oh, that's it. Okay. All right. So the other one you're talking about. Um, so the tailor made adult uh, cherry limeade. Um, my daughter uh, Taylor who uh, is one of my senior managers in Denton. Um, she started off working at Sonic. Okay. And when we decided we needed a cherry limeade on the menu, um, w w all the bartenders and everybody were putting together their recipes and we were gonna have a little contest. And I told her, I said, uh, I said, if you win, I said, I will name it after you. <laughs> and she used her Sonic ingenuity from the cherry limeades and everything and came up with this cherry limeade and uh, she won the contest, so it will forever be known as the Taylor Made Adult <laughs> Cherry Limeade. <laughs> well, you know, it's hard to beat a, ch a Sonic Cherry uh, Limeade. It, it is definitely I'm hard to those beat things, And so you just add alcohol to it, and voila. Add alcohol, and she played around with it, and it's it's delicious. That's a, that's a great story, too, yeah. you see? See yeah. all your stuff's got stories? <laughs> <laughs> what is your, at Shell Shack, you have other things besides, besides the burger. What is your non, for people who don't eat, don't eat seafood, What's the non seafood item that sells well at Crunch? Uh, we got buffalo chicken um, sandwiches. We've got grilled chicken sandwiches, grilled chicken plate, um, uh, chicken fingers for the kids, uh, different stuff like that. Um, it's still seafood, but the catfish sells really well. Um, uh, I bet so. The fried catfish. Why don't people? Why don't people in Texas don't classify catfish as fish? I don't know why they do. I, it's, it's it's. Do you see that <laughs> all the time? Yeah. They're, they're like, I don't like seafood. We got catfish. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny, isn't yeah. it? So have you ever have you ever seen have you ever been there when you've had somebody come in like with a child or with somebody that likes seafood? I don't really like seafood and they try it and they go, Oh wow, this is really good. Yeah, when I when I have somebody come in if I happen to be there and they say my kid doesn't like seafood, I said, Let me let me play around with them and I'll give them, you know, some uh fried shrimp or um some uh Fried alligator, you know, yeah. that, that's a good one because that just tastes like chicken. I yeah, mean, we, it does we, taste like chicken. We prep that really well, and um, our tart, and and I get it with our tartar sauce. Which, funny story behind that, our tartar sauce doesn't taste like anybody else's, and uh, I don't like tartar sauce. And when when I was given that, I was like, wow, that's good. That's how tartar sauce tastes. And uh, Matt and I went to another restaurant and I got tartar sauce, and I was like. Ooh. <laughs> and and Matt goes, yeah, our tartar sauce doesn't taste like anybody else's. <laughs> that's that's good though. That's another, that's another thing that brings people there. Right. Absolutely. What do you think it is? And I, I think it's because people are just scared. What do you think it is they don't want to? Do? Because it's like sushi. People, oh, I don't like sushi. But if I take somebody and I let them try a piece of sushi, it is it, fresh. Most time they'll like it. Either, I think it's either they've had something bad, they've heard stories, they're just scared. What, what do you think the main I thing? I think is? they're just scared. You know, with me with sushi, um, I. I, I was totally against sushi and, you know, started off a little with like a, a shrimp tempura roll, which is all cooked. Yeah. You know, and then... They're good, by the way. Yeah, they're very good. <laughs> and then worked my way up through, you know, a friend of mine owns a... He owned a... Or worked at a, my favorite Japanese restaurant, Jim Bay. 
and he would say, Dallas, try this, try this, try this. Now I eat all sorts of sushi and I own a sushi place, you know. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I just think that people are scared, you know, and they just kind of need to be broken a little bit, you know, nice and easy. Yeah, I do too. So, okay, so let's talk about some of the other concepts because I want we're going to bring some uh, your other food that you because y'all brought some food here today. Yes, we did, and we're going to bring that in and show them a little bit afterwards. So, you got some other concepts. Um, you you got sushi, obviously. Sushi Marquee and the Star, which is uh, it's more than just a sushi restaurant, and we have a full hotline with uh, wagyu steaks. We have fillets. We have ribeyes. You know, every we got a full cook line also, and then we have some of the best sushi out there. Plus the atmosphere; it's very interactive. We we play. 80s, 90s music. Um, I love that. You know, great patio, you know, staff dancing, so it's a lot of fun. I've seen 80s and 90s music make a big comeback. A huge comeback. Well, I don't know what where it came from, but boy, it's made a comeback. Yeah, a huge comeback. I, I see all the, even on the, t I think all the new TV shows I've got the last three years too about, you know, breaking the bands, all the 80s and 90s oh, bands. Yeah. Everything has just really come back around. Oh, it's crazy. 100%. So y'all play that there. We play the videos, yeah, nonstop from 11 a.m. to 2 a.m. I have not, I, I didn't know, I have not been there. I'm ashamed to say I haven't been there. Oh, you should go. come out. It's a lot of fun. Do you, do they prepare everything right in front of everybody? The sushi is it prepared all yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. We've got a, the sushi, it's the main focus uh, right when you walk into the restaurant. We've got a nice bar where we do tons of craft cocktails there also, um, uh, you know, with the spin from the Japanese whiskeys and stuff like that. And then um, we've got a great patio outside that's got a bar and it can be enclosed and heated and everything. So you can use it almost uh, year round. If it gets a little too cold, it doesn't quite get warm enough. Uh, I'm, man, I'm a, I run so hot, I could sit outside pretty much any time in Texas. It, it seems like it's gotten warmer. It used to be a lot colder. <laughs> Look at this Christmas. I mean, we're I, I, 71 today. Doesn't seem like Christmas, does <laughs> <No>. it? <laughs> 70 degrees, I might as well go to Florida. Right. <laughs> so you also have new, something new, or is, is it uh, one in Deep Ellum open now, or, or is it coming? No, it's opened up. Uh, okay. It's Ebb and Flow. And Ebb and it's, Flow. A, it's a cocktail bar and a restaurant and... It's a, it's a concept that I did with my brother. You know, everybody's wanting, he's a very uh, high sought after live music venue operator, runs a um, bomb factory Canton Hall down there. And uh, that's a big one. Yeah, yeah, huge. <laughs> and, uh, you know, everybody was always wondering when we were going to do something together. And so uh, they came up with this concept, and him and I did it together, and it's a lot of fun. And How long has it been open? Uh, what, about four months, I think? Okay, I, I, that's fine. Been here. So what, describe the menu a little bit. What kind of food is it? It's, uh, man, it's just real tasty. We've got uh, something that um, called Cubano egg rolls that is basically a Cuban sandwich and egg roll. Oh, and my God. That made um, uh, best uh, appetizer or one of the best appetizer on Texas Bites for 2019. Um, we've got toasted raviolis as appetizer for, we've got a bunch of sandwiches that you can also have made as a wrap. We've got a Texas Southwest wrap. We've got a... Um, uh, mahi mahi wrap, which is just delicious. In fact, they uh, it was a sandwich. Now we get more wraps. And once we switch it over to, uh, you can do it as a sandwich or wrap. Everybody's getting it as a wrap. We got some great plates, pork chops, mahi mahi again. Mahi mahi is actually our biggest seller. Is it there. really? It it is. If it, if, if if it's fresh, it tastes. It's delicious. It is. It is so delicious there. Everybody, that is one of our top sellers there. Whether they get the mahi mahi plate or the uh, the wrap. We got a stuffed chicken breast, you know, different things there. It's really good. Where is it, Deep Ellum? Uh, it's uh, it's on Commerce Street, right across from uh, Bomb Factory. Okay, right next okay. to Dots. Okay. Yeah. I um, uh, I I'm gonna I gotta go check that out too. Yeah, please. So that'd be, that'd be awesome. So wh where y'all gonna go from here now? So I know y'all got some other plans. Are you gonna Are you gonna open up some more sushi restaurants, or is that a one type deal? No, no, no. We're we're definitely gonna we're we're gonna do more sushi. We're we're going to uh, we're opening up in Florida right now with uh, Shell Shack. We're in Florida. Um, in Tampa. Oh, cool. Yeah, and uh, uh, we're just uh, expanding out, um, looking in different spots to just keep on going. While, while we still have the energy left in us, <laughs> you got lots of energy, obviously. Um, trying. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you're gonna, so you're doing Florida, and then you're gonna, are you gonna put any more stores in DFW? Or do you have plans to do that later um, on? We've got, we're looking at one location right now, and uh, I think we've almost got it unlocked. So we're not gonna, we're not gonna announce yeah. it yet, but yeah. it will be uh, in a press release once we get it unlocked. That's great, and you have, and you, you're working on that new dessert. When does that come out? Uh, hopefully within uh, by the first of the year. I can't wait to try that. Yeah, it's it's really That'd good. That'd be something good to introduce for the first of the year, wouldn't it? Yeah, and uh, I'll tell you what, um, I was sitting there eating it, and uh, I had to tell the bartender to get it away from me because I, <laughs> I just kept on, kept on, kept on. Funnel cake. Who doesn't like a funnel cake? Uh, and, you know, with that caramel, I was eating it with caramel sauce, and I just couldn't stop. Did, that's another, I had I went to try a dessert. You said caramel sauce. That's what made me think. I went to try a dessert. Twigs, 
Bistro, they they revamped. I guess they've revamped. They've changed their name. They've changed their menu around. They're having trouble. But they have a new thing called Drunken Donuts, and it comes with a caramel sauce and a chocolate. And I had that this oh, yeah. week. Yeah, so I just like caramel, but yeah, I thought of that. Yeah, Common Table does a great uh, donut holes with the uh, same thing with caramel sauce and and can never go wrong. Donuts with it. and funnel cake. Oh. But I, although I would take a funnel cake over a donut, just me. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so what all did you bring today for us? Oh my God! We brought uh, we brought crab, we brought grilled shrimp, uh, we brought uh, alligator, I believe. Um, we've got a whole variety of stuff. Awesome! For you. So we're gonna we're gonna start. Um, uh, he'll, he'll, all right, thank you. They're gonna, they're gonna bring it in for us. Oh, perfect! <laughs> yeah. So and we've got the God camera up there, so we'll put. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So the platter, the VIP platter, I had. That's all I had. Is it? Does it come that same way when I had it? Is it come the way every time? Yes. Okay, and that had, can you tell me what all it had on it? Oh my, uh, we've got four different platters. Uh, the VIP, um, don't hold me to this, uh, uh, when it's Bill hard. comes in to, uh, when Bill comes in, I can actually get the exact, but I believe it comes with catfish, um, uh, shrimp, snow crab, and king crab, if I'm not mistaken. So It was big. Yeah, I've got, I've got different restaurants in my head right now so yeah, it's hard I'll to keep understand. up yeah yeah um i i we, we took we took what we did we took home we it was it was good yeah and the corn was delicious oh the corn the corn and the potatoes once it soaks into the sauce yeah. is so good and you know what's good crab is crab is actually very easy to reheat uh the way we the way we um package it and the way we bring it out to the table you just put it in that bag just seal it up 30 seconds in the microwave good to go so that bag that you bring out you can you can reheat in that bag absolutely okay yeah that's a neat bag. Yeah, crab crab travels well. Unfortunately, fried doesn't. It'll get soggy oh, very you can't. easy. Don't yeah. you wish? As soon as somebody comes up with a way to travel fried food, they're going to get Ugh, rich. I'm telling you. <laughs> we we actually I I I tell everybody that orders fried food to go. I go. You guys do know it's not going to be crispy and everything like yeah. it, like you're used to here. And we know we know. Do okay. y'all are y'all doing the are y'all doing the delivery stuff? Um, not yet. We are um, about to get ready. Well, I, I had I talked to a, a I don't uh, I talked to a chef and he's he's he doesn't speak a lot of English. He owns some ramen places, mm -hmm. has three of them, and uh, he won't do it. He he won't didn't like his food to go. He said just not it's not the same. I don't care what anybody wants. They can come here and eat a bite and take it with them. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to send it out. And so there's some people just not going to do it. Well, we have enough to go orders coming in that that's the only reason why we're we're entertaining it. I guess people I guess people are just on the go nowadays. It's just hard, right? Yeah, or they don't want to, you know, our restaurants do get busy, so they'd rather just get to go and take it home. Yeah. So what So what on, if somebody wants to be a manager for you, do y'all do y'all hire from within, or if, if you're looking for management, can, can they come, to, can they apply somewhere for you? Absolutely. All they have okay. to do is go to shellshack.com and go to careers and hit apply, and it'll take them to an application, and they'll, they can sit there and apply online. Y'all always looking for management staff? Always. We're always looking for staff. Good people are hard to come by, so we're always looking for good staff. Uh, it's hard to come by, isn't mm -hmm. it? Hey, where'd you get the idea to serve it on that red tray? <laughs> I said, popped that, into my mind, my ADD, it's good going. So my that actually came as an accident, because uh, uh, initially we served it right on the table uh, with that butcher block paper. Yeah. And um, a couple of the staff members... Um, Started putting it in a tray, and then everybody started asking for the tray, and, and we used to serve it in, in a uh, tray, uh, Pacifico tray, you know, uh, and then we, we uh, s uh, some of my um, business partners and uh, director of franchise, uh, John Glasser, he, um, they were like, well, we got to do, we might as well brand it, and we came up with our own Shell Shack branded trays. Okay, because I, I love that presentation. I thought that was fantastic. Yeah, and it, it's a lot cleaner because we were getting an issue with the, you know, if a table's just barely tilted, the sauce will start running, and uh, if oh. you're not careful, it'll run on somebody's pants, and they get oh. a little upset about oh, that. Oh, I bet that's not good. Yeah. Oh, well, that's a good idea. Right. Well, I just thought it was such a great presentation because presentation is everything. Well, again, and that's how we've evolved, you know, throughout the throughout the years. It, and it actually worked out good for us because if you're putting hot seafood on our table, even though it's on that butcher block, uh, paper within about six months, you know, you look at that table and it's all cracked and everything from the heat. Oh, I didn't, so yeah. that's actually helped us also. So that's helped you too, is other mm -hmm. things. So, because uh, I keep, I like that platter so much that the VIP player I had. Where do your potatoes come from? Are they from a vendor? Because potatoes are very, very good. Yeah, they come from a vendor. Uh, but, but I mean, from somebody, do you get the same guy all the time? Absolutely. Okay, they, they, were, they, were, they were so, so good. And the corn, same way? Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. It comes from the same vendor, same corn. It's that sweet corn, so. That's really good. Bill, what's in our VIP platter? We've got a pound of shrimp. Let me have that right here. That's right. Okay. okay. 
Thank you. Uh, pound of shrimp and a pound of snow crab. Pound with of shrimp, pound of snow crab. And potatoes. With corn sausage and potatoes. There wow. You go. That smells. I forgot about the sausage already. Mm hmm. So is this those is corn and potatoes that you like so much. Oh yes. Oh, that grilled shrimp. Let's bring that up here too. Yeah. <laughs> There's a story behind these grilled shrimp, also. Okay. <laughs> I love stories. I was actually um, uh, meeting with our POS uh, purveyor, and I just had the taste for grilled shrimp that day. It wasn't on our menu, and I I asked who was in the kitchen and. We were at our planning location, and it was one of our top guys. And I said, see if you can make me some grilled shrimp real quick. He whipped it up with some garlic butter and stuff like this. And there are those crab tater tots. Oh, there they are right there. Yeah. And uh, he whipped it up. I was like, okay, we need to put that on the menu. And so uh, we played with it for a couple weeks just to make sure we get it right. And next thing you know, we put garlic sh or uh, grilled shrimp on the menu. That's fantastic. I just love that. And this, is okay, tell the sausage now because the sausage is very good too. Right, yeah. It's just, it's just uh, the sausage that, you know, we got to prep it. And, you know, what we do is we we have it prep, cut the same, and then once they order it, we throw it on the grill real quick and, you know, it gets that snap to it. It's, that's, I was just fixing to say the snap when you mm -hmm. said that. People, uh, people that don't eat sausage a lot don't understand the snap. The snap's really important. Right. Yeah. If it's, if it's been sitting too long and, you know, it gets soggy, so. Yeah, you can tell. Oh, yeah. You got to be real careful with that, and you know every, that's that goes with your line checks. You know, you got to go through. People don't understand. You got to taste it. You know, taste is a lot of thing. You got to grab it. You know, make sure it's got the snap. You know, you got to taste the corn. You got to taste the potatoes. You know, everything. There's a taste test. That's involved. that passion. See, absolutely. <laughs> All right, so we've got this. This is the uh, the VIP normal would be on. Um, does it come like this? No, no, yeah, no. Yeah, it's all it, one. Yeah, it comes It comes uh, all in one bag. Um, we have uh, four different platters. Bill, help me out here. What are our platter names? We've got the VIP, we have the date night, we have the boss, and we have the heavyweight. The heavyweight's okay. the big dog. Okay. That's that, comes, a, okay. that comes with, you better, have, you better be ready to eat or have a lot of people with you. <laughs> <laughs> we basically have a heavyweight here between the, the boil, the veggies, and the boss. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So the heavy the heavyweight is a is a big one. I think I saw the menu the heavyweight. I couldn't remember the name. Four or five people. Uh, is it feed? No, uh, three the to heavy, five. The heavyweight is six to eight, I believe. Six to eight. Oh boy, I missed that one. <laughs> and, and and I'll tell you what, we've had two people come in and and put it away. That, that, are you serious? Uh huh. And be oh ready my. for more. All right, so these right here, these are the crab tater tots. Absolutely. These are the ones that um, that uh, are the uh, it's crab stuff. Tater crab stuff. Yeah, right. Those are delicious. And then the, we got the crab, we got the shrimp there. Real shrimp. And then here's the burger, which I know you had, mm -hmm. which now I'm going to have to uh, check that out. Absolutely. Our burgers, <laughs> uh, they come really good. We actually um, made those in our sports bar way back when. And so we make a very good burger at all of our places. You got the buffalo chicken sandwich over here. You got some fried catfish, some fried shrimp. You got the carrot cake back there. You got the carrot there. cake. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Story behind that's the story behind that carrot cake. So um, I, I want to know what percentage, uh, what percentage of people come in have not tried this, see it come by the table, and then maybe maybe they get one. Oh, or the only one. Just uh, by presentation alone. By just, presentation alone, I mean everybody. That that's the thing. Everybody sees it come out in the bag and they swish it around and they're looking and the last, you know, what kind of sauce. But everything is education with us. Our servers come in. They you know ask them, have you been here before? And if if they haven't been there before, you know they tell them. They tell them about it. If they've been there before, they're pretty much they come in. They know what they want. Yeah, you, you yeah. know. And you try to you try to tell them about different things. And you know, we've got these buffalo shrimp. We've got this and that. And oh, I wasn't even aware, even though it's right right there on the menu. They weren't even aware of it because they come in. They know what they want. Yeah. And do, do you? Uh, uh, yeah. Also, too, I think th th I think they come in. They know what they want. They don't realize the other stuff that you have available. Exactly. So we, you talked about the bag a while ago, but the bag's important. So how did you? Where did y'all come up with the development of the bag? How did that come about? Um, just from the when we went to that one concept and we looked at it, that's how that's how they brought it out. And so um, we 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 just copied them. You know. But 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 you didn't really you didn't copy it. You just you just took the idea and, and made and, and made, a, made a mind. Yeah. <laughs> um, the uh, you said it's microwavable. Mm -hmm. So it's it's it, 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 is it porous? Is it some kind? Of, is it is it? 
No, it's just it's a it's a thicker, better brand bag. You've got because you got you you do have to be careful because if you don't get the right thickness, um, you'll put the seafood in there and the bag will just explode and it'll you know you'll you'll go to pull it out of the tray and dump it dump it in the tray form and it'll just explode everywhere. So you know you got to be real careful with the bag that you get. And so we make sure that our bags you know can hold up. We don't we don't have that problem. Wow, that's that's great too. So this is this is um I I, I see the carrot cake back there. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I want to. Can, can you can can they see the carrot cake back there? I don't know if they can see it or not. I think they can. So, I'm just amazed at all the food. And now this plate right here, that's that's catfish. Yeah, that's catfish. That's uh, that's um, some shrimp. Thank you, Chris. Here, Chris, set this back a week, please. Thank you. I'm gonna set this right, right here where we can talk about it. Cause I just I thought the carrot cake was a great story. So there, there it looks good right there. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, so the catfish, that's catfish. What platter is that? I think you probably said, well, go with uh, that's, uh, that's just a fried platter. It's, uh, it's catfish, french fries, some fried shrimp, some hush puppies. So when, when and he, he said, well, go when he left, when you, when you do the big, the big platter, you, you, that, that comes with it, right? Correct. Okay. That's awesome. And I, your hush puppies were good too. Our hush puppies are good. Our catfish is, is, uh, amazing. Um, it took us probably three or four years to find a catfish that is not doesn't taste dirty. I was just fixing to say to you, but when you said alligator a while ago, the first time I tried alligator, it tasted like it come from the swamp. Mm -hmm. I mean, dirty. Second time I tried it, so maybe the third time I tried it, it tasted really. It was nice and clean, tasted like chicken. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's the difference of how it, where it comes from, correct? Correct. And, and um, our alligator comes from Shreveport. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, I love this guy to death. Um, Farmer Seafood is uh, our purveyor out of Shreveport. They just had their 101st birthday, family owned. Um, guy Johnny, who is the owner, uh, when we we actually found them, they were driving through Dallas and uh, my business partner snapped a picture and sent it to me and I called him up. He uh, he brought me out there, put me up in a casino, took me on a <laughs> took me on a tour of a tour of the place. Uh, my other business partner Adam went with me and um, took me of a tour of the place and then Adam and I sat up and and um, gambled <laughs> for about six hours at, <laughs> at the casino. And we actually met a lady there um, that was uh, a fan of Shell Shack. She was from Dallas and she's like, what are you guys doing? We own Shell Shack. And she's like, oh my God. She's <laughs> like, I love Shell Shack. And she's like, and you have a person that works there named Jordan that I absolutely love. And it just <laughs> went on and on. And so, uh, you know, Johnny's family owned and, and he constantly is sending us stuff. Alligator wasn't on the menu until he sent it to me. He's like, hey, you gotta try this alligator. And he sent it out, and uh, we we tried it, and boom! Next thing you know, it's on our menu. So you saw his truck driving through DFW. Was Correct. it wrapped? Uh, yeah, yeah. It had uh, see wraps it, work. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, that's why we got the wrapped uh, monster truck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And the wrapped, uh, you know, uh, little Mini Cooper. So I, I think I think wraps lots of times are subliminal. So in other words, I see you, you drive by and traffic somebody drives by and sees it. There's a rest you with them right away. Right. But 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 the way our minds work, they see it, and then they think about it a, a day later, or a week later, or they see your logo somewhere, and they say, "I saw that. I saw that wrap going by." So it's it's amazing how that works. But Absolutely. That's funny that you did that. Yeah, that huge that. fan of wraps. So that so the alligator. That's that's a neat story. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know different things that we've tried with Johnny. Um, you know that's where our calamari comes from. Uh, we had a. Um, crab stuffed uh, shrimp that didn't quite make the menu and I, I was I was heartbroken because it tasted so good um, but it, it just didn't didn't go out as well to people it just it just didn't just didn't yeah, well, yeah. It's, you know, it's yeah. Just, that's why it's a chalkboard item before yeah. it makes it to the menu you know and uh, but I was I was heartbroken because I really did like <laughs> that crab <laughs> Wait, that crab stuffed shrimp so is that the way you is that the way you test your items as chalkboard mm -hmm. absolutely so oh, we, that's a good... we, we do it as a chalkboard item and uh, the, in fact, the uh, alligator and the grilled shrimp, I believe, is still on our chalkboard, but it's made it to the menu. So now uh, we've got some desserts coming out. We've got the fried cheesecake, the fried um, bread pudding, which we already carry the cheesecake right. and the bread pudding on our menu. And a couple of guys were messing around in the kitchen. They're like, Dallas, try this. And I was like, all right. So on, <laughs> uh, on our chalkboard <laughs> item is going to be the funnel cake fun or the funnel fries. The fried cheesecake and the fried br bread pudding. So fried cheesecake. So explain this to me. You they do you, do you get cheesecake off? So you just roll it and fry it. What do you? Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> How could that be bad? You, you know, take our cues from the state fair. Yeah. 
Have you seen that new show, Carnival Eats? I have been running. About no, three years. I haven't. You need to, you need to watch that show because it's about three years old now. And I, I you know, I TV a lot. Of, it's not TV anymore. Whatever the hell it's called. Yeah. Uh, uh, whatever, record yeah. them all. When well, I'm on the computer, I just let them run in the background. And then if I hear something, I'll, just, I'll whip around and, and, and watch it. And that Carnival Eats has got, he features three new trendy items every show. And they've got, he's already got like 60 shows. And he's got all kinds of fried stuff. You ought to watch the show because it's ideals you can take from that and create something else. So. Yeah, you know, um, I, I give my uh, staff a lot of credit because they'll, they'll play around with stuff in the back. And they're like, try this. You know, um, the funnel cake, we don't, or I'm sorry, the uh, bread pudding. We don't even wrap that. They just they just put that directly in the fryer, and and it comes out and it's so good. <laughs> I couldn't believe when they they were like, "Try this," and I was like, "Wow, that's good too." <laughs> well, you're putting those fryers to use, aren't uh, we you? We <laughs> are putting those fryers to use. <laughs> you are uh, also. I want to say this. Uh, the, uh, the, I've eaten there four times now, and every time I've eaten there, everything's always tasted fresh. And some restaurants don't do a very good job of of, of cleaning out their oil, rotating their oil, and you you, oh, you, you yeah. do uh, everything's always tastes phenomenal. Absolutely, yeah. That's one thing. I mean, uh, we learned uh, way back before we did Shell Shack that you've got to you got to change that oil out. I mean, if you don't, people are like, man, that tastes bad. And and so we learned our lesson early early on in life, way before Shell Shack, to. Uh, yeah, swap that oil out. It's amazing you can go to a restaurant and that still happens. I'm like, how in the hell? That's one of the things that, that you're using. If you're using a fry in your restaurant, that's going all, a lot of people are going to use that. So it's like that's got to be one of the things you do. you you got to do that, and you've got to make sure that your, your oil is temp properly. And um, they go by. We ha- actually have a laser gun that, you know, because you're dumping a lot of a lot of frozen food in. Yeah. It'll bring that temp down real quick. And, and so uh, go by and with the temp gun, you know, make sure it's up to... If not, you know, you never you never believe the 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 nozzles or anything. You gotta you yeah. gotta temp it. It might say one sixty five over there, and it's temping at one forty five. Yeah, turn it up a little bit. Big difference, isn't it? Absolutely. So 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 are you now we've talked about four desserts. I didn't even know you had that. So we talked. We've got your which I love because I've had it. Obviously, right. I'd probably love them all if I had them all because um, I love sweets. So you've got you've got the the fried cheesecake, um, the fried bread, the fried bread, bread pudding that uh, you just dump in the fryer, right. And we're in the uh, funnel cake fries. Funnel cake fries, which are going to be out in uh, uh, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully January one. Is it going to be chalkboard item? Yeah, they're going to. They're all going to be chalkboard items. Um, but I don't. I don't. Th- I don't foresee any problem in <laughs> going, going to the menu. <laughs> you know, I was at a restaurant a friend of mine has, and uh, he, I ordered a salad. He brought. He brought out and had this beautiful egg on it. And I said, "We do the egg," and he said, "Man, I just take the egg. We open up the egg." To, and and then just turn it over in the fryer and it sinks the bottom of the fryer and comes back up and so it's as it sinks down it fries wow. so it's about this high up on the salad and you just bite it's crunchy just regular egg it was it was it was phenomenal wow it was so so easy to do but I never thought about it never thought about that too that sounds <laughs> yeah. delicious I love eggs he so, said yeah. it was an accident <laughs> <laughs> and that's put whatever salad he has wow so it's Grady Spears over there yeah um, amazing and, yeah it's kind of funny huh. So what? So what else you got? What, wait, what is that sandwich back there? Uh, that's buffalo chicken sandwich. That's big. It's huge and it's tasty. I and love to try yeah, it too. They're, they are so good. Yeah. That is awesome. And then we, you know, we brand our brand our buns with our logo. I and, think that's so important now. Yeah. I, I think, and now it, it, people aren't doing it, but I think it's important because all the whole time they look at that, all they think of is is, is where, they're, where they're from. And, yeah. And you know, it's so easy to do. It takes three seconds. You three prep, seconds. You prep twenty, you know, buns in the morning. And is it electric? Uh yeah okay yeah and you just sit there and you you put the burner on it and you you don't push down you just go, count to three one two three and pick it up go to the next one you know it takes a you know two minutes to do twenty buns you're done me, me and my family being in the ranching business all my all, all you know for 150 years when I first saw it, I thought I, oh I can see somebody back there with a branding iron and a fire and yeah rrr. so I, I told everybody I was like uh, I was like I better not see anybody chasing anybody around this uh, with this <laughs> okay, thank you. Ne- next thing you know they're they're, they're going to be branding somebody on the butt you know? <laughs> <laughs> Well, Dallas, I really appreciate it. We've got if people want to get a hold of Shell Shack, tell, tell how how they how they can look them up. Shell Shack. Uh, Shell Shack dot com and uh, phone number is eight four four Love Crab L U V C R A B eight four four Love Crab. Mm-hmm. That's great marketing right there. Absolutely, everything, all location, everything's on the website. Correct. Correct. And if they want to, if they want to uh, visit a Shell Shack uh, in the in the local area, does everyone has their own? Everyone has their own social media too. Correct. Correct. And you're on Instagram, obviously. Absolutely. Because I've seen on stuff on Instagram. Absolutely. Okay, so shellshack.com. Mm-hmm. And anything else we can know about it? 
Uh, everybody come out and try it. Come out and yeah, try we're it. Open up, uh, we're open 365 days a year. Oh, and you're open Christmas. Absolutely. And the day after New Year's, and you're going to have, what is it you said? Uh, 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 everybody comes in, uh, you know, all partied out. They'll love to come in and get that gumbo. Gumbo, that's right. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Thanks for watching again. Uh, appreciate it. You can go to tracechowdown.com. That's Trey with an E. All our videos, all our programs on there. If you're watching from the Country Network, appreciate it. If you watch from the Country Network, please go to tracechowdown.com. Look at all our restaurants, all our chefs, all our videos, all our shows. And we'll be back again next Friday, same time. I guess you say same bat channels, what I always same say. Same bat channel. <laughs> <laughs> same bat time, same bat channel. Dallas, I really appreciate it. Hey, man. I, thank you very me. much. And we'll see you all again next week. Have fun, eat out, uh, and catch us next Friday on ABC, Channel 8, and DFW. And next Saturday on Channel 4, Fox 4. We've got the big chili special coming out. If you like chili and you're in DFW area, North Texas, all the way from Paris to Abilene, we're going to have the best chili. See you all then. Bye. Trey Chapman, publisher of TraceChowdown.com. I'm passionate about finding the best food, drinks, and chefs to sharing it all with you. I should know I have over five decades of food experience. Find me on any podcast platform, Facebook Live, or just Google me. Now you can watch and listen to all my great finds every week on my live TV and radio podcast at Trey's Chowdown Live.